Pyrolytical Radio is online. This is the Kate Daly Show. I think most Americans have given up on national leadership that is competent, effective, and capable of driving and engineering the great government machine. Hi there. Welcome to the Kate Daly Show. The time is 3.06 on a beautiful Tuesday. Get the app, KZNU. Make sure you can listen from wherever you're going or where you're traveling. Clear as a whistle. I mean, honestly, clean and clear uh, reception. KZNU, go to the App Store and grab it um, and just put it on your smartphone. Easiest thing. I have Thomas Dykes in studio with me today. Hello again. It's Tuesday with Thomas. I like Tuesdays with Thomas. <laughs> like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right? It's awesome. And uh, we're always talking about liberty, freedoms. It works its way into every conversation I think we have because, honestly, we're having to fight for it. We have a special guest. I'm, I'm, guess, I'm just going to, yeah, I don't know, I'm just going to go for it and guess that this could be Stephen Palmer. That's me. Oh, hey, how's it going? <laughs> how are you? Awesome. How are you guys? Good. I'm so glad you have finally made it on the show. I am, I've been wanting you on the show forever, so this is great. You, ca- you carved out some time. Deal. A lot of people you are. Shows. You're a very busy man, Stephen Paul. <laughs> That's what he likes to tell me. He's a big deal. Well, I'm like, a really? Listeners, I'm, I'm only kidding. <laughs> That's not what your wife said. I'm just, oh. just saying. <laughs> Ouch. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, geez, are you two friends? Mm. We have been friends forever, and I, yeah. I am just so grateful I've been able to influence Steve's philosophy and yeah. to help him to come to some realizations right, that right. he's going to share today. And uh, yeah, so powerful. I'm, I've Thanks. been a mentor of Steve, wow. more or less. Wow. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of the other way around. So I love this. You've got many, many books out. We quote you all the time on the show. For those that heard the uh, red shirt, uh, the red sash story, the mm-hmm. Indian tribe story, that was from you, Stephen. That's, it was awesome. I read that on the air. Loved it. Well, that might, I would say the commentary around that story is for me, but that story wasn't, I got that story out of a book. But isn't that a great Great analogy, oh, great story. Amazing. It was wonderful. I even talked about it at dinner with my kids the next day. Just to tell you, I mean, I, oh, cool. yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool stuff. So you have a lot going on right now. And uh, so tell us, much. tell us what is on the docket right now for you. We are trying to raise $180,000 for Child Rescue, which is an organization that saves children from sex labor, sex labor all across the world. There's I don't know if your listeners know this. I, this was news to me. I mean, mm-hmm. it's kind of one of those issues that you kind of know is out there, but I had no idea. There are 2 million children enslaved, held in slavery, and bought and sold for sex across the globe. Absolutely. I can't even wrap my brain around it. But we're in, uh, we've, we've launched a campaign to raise $180,000 here in St. George this year, which will save about 100 kids. From sex slavery. This is amazing, and and we can do something down here. We've had Tim Ballard on the show several times. Um, yeah. I, we also had Dallas Highland on, um, who comes on Wednesdays, who was a reporter in that last event that Tim Ballard did uh, down in South America, and um, some crazy details. I mean, the things that uh, the things that are happening that we're just not realizing, and for all of the, all of you that have kids, it really hits home that these kids are subjected to this. Yeah, and it's not just it's not just across the world. It's not in third world countries. It's it's here. It's in our, here in our backyard. It's a lot more prevalent in the U.S. than anybody would care to to believe or imagine. Yeah, I I actually saw a statistic, Steve, that um, about a hundred thousand children are estimated to be the victims of sex trafficking every year. Thirteen years old is the average age of entry into prostitution, and it said about every two minutes that a U.S. child is sexually trafficked for commercial gain every two minutes in the U.S., in the but land you, of the free, home of the brave. Word, prostitution, and that's actually something really important to talk about. One of the challenges that, that the project is facing, so, so let me give you a little bit of context first. Mm-hmm. I learned about this project from a man by the name of Jess Larson. Jess Larson is a great guy, um, just a, an amazing human being. He founded, he's the founder and CEO of Child Rescue, and he and I heard him speak at an event. Um, it's been three to four weeks ago, and 
heard this story and I vowed right on the spot that I was going to do something about it. But one of the things that he talked about, this was a really critical point. He said, you know, one of the, one of the things that they're facing both with, you know, with law enforcement and which is the general public in this is that, um, you know, back in the times of slavery, it, it wasn't, it wasn't that, that, that whites didn't view blacks as not human. It's they view them as not human in the, in the same way that you and I are, right? Mm-hmm. And so there was there were certain words that they would use that would essentially dehumanize them and separate them. And he talked about how there's a word in this industry that is tossed around a lot that, that creates a lot of problems with them, and that word is prostitute. So law enforcement officers will see 15-year-old girls and call them, when, you, when they're labeled prostitutes, they're criminals. Right, not sex slaves, and and he talked about how that's actually a, a big issue that they're dealing with is changing the vernacular on that. Is that I know what you meant by that, Thomas, when you said pro- you were talking about them willingly entering into prostitution, right. and them just the act of them being prostituted, but being prostituted. To bring up right because because that's the one of the main challenges they're facing right now in bringing this to public awareness is we we're seeing these these kids. And, and labeling them prostitutes, and and essentially they become criminals in the eyes of law enforcement officers and the public, and it, it makes the job harder. Wow. Amazing challenge you have before you. Um, and when people hear about this from you, what is their reaction? I mean, are they immediately wanting to get involved? Do they need to think about this? I mean, is it is it hard for people just to wrap their brain around this being such a huge issue? Well, I don't have any experience yet with actual fundraising because mm-hmm. we're we're just now in the process of creating a team. In fact, I want to invite anybody listening to this in St. George to join our team as far as people joining. So right now my main job, is before we go out and figure out whatever fundraising initi- initiatives that we do, the, the first job is to create a team of volunteers who say, I am so in on this. This I'm, I'm shocked and stunned and sickened that this is happening. We got to do something about this. So on that level, Yes, everybody is just immediately responding like, absolutely, Excellent. I'm going to get involved in this. And, and a lot of people, too, it, it's funny. We, everybody gets hit up with charities, and, and I think, and I do this myself, right? A lot of times I'll think, you know, I'm already doing a lot of good in the world. There's only so much I can do. And I'll turn down a lot of charitable opportunities, not because I'm not charitable, but just, just because there's only so much time in the day. There's only so much money mm-hmm. I can give, and I try to be strategic. This, I think, is one of those things that everybody sees and they just immediately, yes, this, this has got to stop. Like, it just, there's no, this is not a, 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 an optional thing. We've got to stand up and do something about this. Well, I, Steve, I, I've looked at several of these sites, and the, the one that I started with was childrescueassociation.org. And I think you yes. linked to that. But they said that the average number of, quote, clients and quote that victims must have sex with daily is one to 15. And, and I thought that's why this is so critical because that's today. There are kids, I mean, hundreds of thousands of kids where that's their reality. There was this video of this young woman who was at 15. Her dad took her to a place Jeez. full of men and right there and then gave them money and they all raped her. Wow. And then this family wow. adopted her and and it took them years to get her to understand what true love was. Like the dad gave her a bracelet in the one video and she was like, I think I'm starting to understand what love is. But my point is that they're so damaged by this that it can take decades or a lifetime to overcome the traumatic effects of this. I can't relate to that, but to think that that's somebody's reality today, mm-hmm. that makes me say, you know what? I can f- figure out some time. And so March 7th, if you guys want to meet me, come tell me how much you disagree with me on the radio. You can do that personally. I'm going to attend the, the Steve's meeting. And I think, do we have an actual location on that, on that Steve? We're still working on that, but I, I would just, anybody who's listening and, and wants to be involved in that, and, and the idea is the bigger team we have, the less time and effort required of each individual volunteer, right? Mm-hmm. And so if, if anybody has an inclination, just have them call me. Call my cell phone, Stephen Palmer, and can I just give him my phone? Please. Uh, 435- oh, are you going to give it? No, go ahead. Give it. No, go oh, ahead. It's, uh, 
435-862-9370. Just have people call me directly, and I'll, and I'll uh, set them up as, as a volunteer. So, so that's, uh, call me, Stephen Palmer, at 435-862-9370. Wow. And this is hard stuff to look at. Like that experience I just shared, that video mm-hmm. put me in tears because I'm like, I can't. I, I can't imagine being a kid and the, you know, parents and adults are the ultimate authority figure and you're so innocent and helpless. And yet these, these adults, these authority figures take advantage of love you. you in some cases, like a parent, yeah. right? Like you're so helpless. And it, betray you Yeah. by putting you in this situation. It's mind boggling. It's mind blowing. Yeah, and and, and the, the problem is it's, uh, you know, a lot of it is driven by by very well established, uh, you know, organized crime. And and one of the numbers that Jess Larson gave us was that you know that one of the challenges they're facing is this industry for for organized crime rings is about a thirty two billion dollar a year industry. So it's a big money maker for them, and we're throwing about twenty million dollars a year at a thirty two billion dollar industry. Jeez. So there's just this huge discrepancy and, and that's why we've got to just get people more people involved and aware of understanding what's going on. I agree. Are you working with Tim Ballard's organization at all? Only I, I ask only because we've had him on. Are you linking up to that at all or will you in the future? So Child Rescue, so my relationship is with Jeff Larson and Child Rescue. Child Rescue is a is kind of a, a little bit of a mothership for there's several organizations out there and Child Rescue is the main 501c3 that funds the operation. So Child Rescue has actually had a relationship with Operation Underground Railroad, which is Tim Ballard's organization, mm-hmm. and they have they have give, given them a lot of funding for a lot of their rescue missions. And they also work with three. They work with four specific organizations who are the kind of the boots on the ground to go in and do the rescue mission. And Child Rescue is the main 501c3. So what we're doing here is we're funneling money to uh, Child Rescue. Mm-hmm. And the neat thing about it is, um, and by the way, anybody who comes to the meeting on March 7 will get to meet Jeff Larson himself and, and hear his story. And his wife will, will be here with him, and she has quite a story about this to tell us. And Great. So, uh, you know, in speaking with Jeff Larson, he's telling us that they, they've got it all set up where we, as a community, those of us here involved in this project, we get to decide where we want the money to go. We'll have some control over that. So we can tell him, hey, we want this to go to Operation Underground Railroad. Or whenever, whenever something comes up, like, you know, people have different affinities for different locations. If somebody wants to send some money to Argentina or mm-hmm. somewhere in South America, or maybe somebody wants to send some money to Asia, our group specifically will have some control over where that money goes because, like I say, Child Rescue is kind of the main one that funds all the missions, and, and we'll get to choose where we want that money to go. Now, they are working with the federal government, and they take official police actions for these raids to rescue the kids. How do these raids work exactly? What do you know about that? Not a lot. Jess Larson would be the one to talk to. Here's my understanding of, you know, he, he did walk us through some scenarios. He showed us some pictures and told us some stories. My basic understanding is that they will, these volunteers who, uh, you know, what, these guys who are going down and doing their hospital res- rescue missions, these are pretty uh, hard, experienced guys. I mean, these are special ops guys. They're, they're na- ex-Navy SEALs. They're ex-CIA. They're guys who have they're a lot of really deep undercover guys. They have a lot of experience doing this kind of thing, and they, they've gotten out of the official capacities and are now just kind of volunteering to do this. Um, and so on, on a private basis, and so what will happen is they'll create relationships with, with um, you know, the, the, the law enforcement officers at wherever location where they're going for a mission, and they will pose as people buying the children, right? Mm. So they'll go find the people who are selling the children. They'll pose as partiers and say, hey, you know, we're look, looking for whatever, and they'll, you know, the younger the better, and they'll bring them kids. And then while the transaction is happening, so, so it's for all intents and purposes, the, you know, the, the, the people selling the children think that, that our undercover officers or, 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 or rescuers are, um, are people trying to buy the children. 
And, and so then the law enforcement officers will come in and take everybody down. They'll take our volunteers. They'll handcuff all of our volunteers, take them out one door. And then the other guys, they take out the other door. And so they never wow. see that they were undercover officers. Jeez. Well, you know, Stephen, and I think you agree to me, there's not a lot that I approve of that our federal government does. However... This is something I think I could get behind. I was on the, the website, tacticalrescueschool.org, and uh, they actually give training to FBI law enforcement and parole officers, um, Child Rescue does, and it says they've re- rescued over 230-plus children. Um, but there's Child Rescue supporters. you got everybody from Glenn Beck to Larry King to Katie Couric to uh, Glamour Magazine. So it's like... It's nice to see that there's well, one issue and one power that the federal government engages in that mm-hmm. we probably can all get behind because there are already victims, crimes have already been committed, so we can we can yeah, get this united. Is just, this is just not an ideological thing. This is just yeah. such a united thing. Anybody and and some context on that number that you gave of 230 kids. Now Tim Ballard would would tell you this. He maybe did tell you on his show when he was on that in 10 years with Department of Homeland Security, he was only able to save 123 kids. Right. And his first month of doing this privately, he was able to save more kids than he had in 10 years. So, Isn't that amazing? Um, wow. You know, and, and, and the other thing about, uh, I'm glad that you saw a tactical rescue school uh, website, Thomas, because one of the things that we're going to be doing with, with a portion of our money will actually go to the St. George Police Department. I've already spoken with John Pike about this. We had a good meeting. John Pike, the mayor, is totally on board with this. In fact, he said, Katie, he'd love to get on your show and talk about this once we start ramping up our initiatives. But one of the things we talked about is Child Rescue provides really, really advanced technical training on how to infiltrate these networks and kind of cut the, the head of the snake off kind of a deal. So a portion of the funds that we raise will go to providing this advanced technical, tactical training for the St. George Police Department. And I'm working directly with the mayor on that. That's fabulous. Wow. Of course. I would definitely welcome that and have actually both of you on to talk about it, to talk about the support behind it, because people need to know these things. Absolutely. We definitely need to be able to get on board. Well, can, I can't imagine, and I'm brand new to this. I just got in Steve's email and watched a few videos, which I honestly didn't want to watch because I almost wanted to keep ignorant about this because like, it's such a hard thing as a dad of three, um, two daughters to, to even consider it. Um, but... Can you imagine what these these soldiers and these these hired guns that go in and say these kids what they see? I can't imagine what it's like to encounter these kids when they're first rescued and and to just see what the situation is and these scumbags that are um, prostituting them out. I I can't imagine what that's like. I, yeah, I I don't know. I I just it's 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 incomprehensible. You can't even wrap your brain around people doing this to children, but it, it's happening, and I'm not going to stand for it. And I know that there's plenty of people in the community who feel the same and invite you to join us in taking the stand. I agree. I agree. Good on you for doing something, for standing up and, and doing something and starting to talk to the powers that be that, that can make things happen as well as yourself, but, but uh, starting to do something, because it's all about action, isn't it? I mean, Somebody's got to do something, so I applaud the effort that you that you're putting in currently to do something. This is amazing. So good. And and say again why you picked the the figure one hundred eighty thousand. You may have said this if there are people just turn, turn, tuning in. Tell them why one hundred eighty thousand, and also give us the date of the meeting again. The date of the meeting is March seventh. That's our first strategy session where we're going to be deciding. Here's the big initiative that we go after to raise one hundred eighty thousand dollars this year. And th- that number is somewhat arbitrary. It's just that when I was talking to Jeff Larson, he told me that it takes about $1,800. The average of them, what, you know, with their experience, it takes about $1,800 to save one kid. And I just, on the spot, I said, I'm going to save 100 kids this year. I and think so that's, that's a great that goal. Number came from. Well, it's a fantastic goal. I mean, that's, uh, and, and you have to start somewhere and maybe this grows with enough support from the community. And, and I know how many people are listening right now and it's a huge volume of people and we need to do something about it. It's, it's disgusting. It's wrong. It's a crime. It's happening all day, every day. Like Thomas said, this is happening right now as we're talking about it. 
It's a crime against well, and humanity. You, you know, you, I appreciate you complimenting me for taking action, uh, Kate. But the truth is, is look, I, I'm just the guy who stood up and said, "Hey, let's do something." This this can't just be mine. It, it has to be teamwork. I there's no way I can do this alone. Everybody's busy. We're all busy. I'm running about 15 businesses. It seems like, and I <laughs> this is true. Everybody's busy. I, don't, I when I pulled the trigger on this, I just I didn't know how I was going to do it. Right. And I don't know how I'm going to do it. I just know I am going to do it. But the way I'm going to do it is through a team. I, it can't be me alone. It's, there, there's more people out there who will take every bit as much, if not more action, as me. I'm just one guy standing up saying, hey, let's do this. So we, we need a team. So yeah. anybody who feels inclined to do this, call me and be at that March 7th meeting and help us create and execute these initiatives to raise some money. And, and by the way, I... I have a. I really believe that 180,000 is fairly conservative. I think that we could really create something pretty magical and spectacular, and really just knock that, just totally eclipse that number. And why not raise a million or more? I think we have that ability. Agree. We're going to take a break right now. Will you stay with us? I want to come back and talk about the statue of responsibility just briefly. Sure. Would that be okay? Sure. All right. We'll be right back. More with Thomas Dykes and Stephen Palmer when we return on the Kate Daly Show. A big nice thing in the street Gonna be a big man someday You got mud on your face Your big disgrace Kicking your can all over the place Singing we Hi there. Welcome back to the Kate Daly Show. The time is 3.34. Glad you're tuned in, listening in from whatever device or station. We're on four different frequencies, AM and FM, all through Southern Utah. And of course, large streaming audience all over the country. So hello to all of you too. And hello to the NSA, because we can't forget them. They're such a joy. Uh. Anyway, <laughs> hello, Bluffdale. Anyway, so this segment of the show brought to us by St. George Ink and Toner. If you want to save money on your ink for your printers, now you can with St. George Ink and Toner. I've got Thomas Dykes in studio. I'm Kate Dally, we've got Stephen Palmer on the line. Hi, Stephen. Hi. <laughs> Hi. How are you? You survived the break. <laughs> you survived the break. So, just barely. So we were just, if you're just joining us, we had a, a big conversation last half hour about some of the work Stephen's doing. If you want to tie that up for us, Stephen, that'd be great. Yeah, so we're, we're talking about raising $180,000 for child rescue, which will save 100 kids from sex labor this year. And I think one of the things that's, that's kind of overwhelming to think about, you think, well, there's 2 million kids in sex slavery across the globe. What difference does 100 kids make? So I think a lot of times, I don't think people are uncharitable. I don't think that they are hardened. I think people just, A, don't know exactly how to engage. And two, I think there's a little bit of an overwhelm when you look at the, the numbers like that. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the story that always keeps coming to my mind is, you know, 100 kids, what does that do in the face of 2 million? Well, there's a story, it's a very well-known known story, a lot of people have heard it, but you know, this old man comes by and sees this young kid on the beach. There's, there's all these starfish that have been exposed because the tide receded. And the kid is out there, I mean, there's just hundreds, the beach is littered with all of these starfish, and the kid is out there throwing starfish back into the ocean. And the guy said, well what are you doing? He's like, well, I'm getting all these starfish back in the ocean because if they don't get back, they're going to die. And he said, you can't possibly make a difference for all of these starfish. There's too many of them. And the kid picked up the starfish, threw it back into the ocean and said, it made a difference for that one. It's the truth. And I think that's what we have to remember, that these aren't numbers, these aren't statistics, these are children. These are little boys and girls with hopes and dreams, just like me and you, and we got to look at the one and say, can we make a difference to that one? Yeah, I, I guarantee that if you were on one of the rescue missions and you looked these kids in the eyes, and let's say there's three kids being saved in a rescue mission, you would never forget those eyes and looking into those eyes. And it would mean for those three an entirely different life and giving them their life back. So I can't even imagine being in the circumstance and and after looking into those little eyes and not thinking that, oh my gosh, it was worth it just for the three, just for the three. If you could just get three of those yeah. kids to change their circumstance. Absolutely. And, it and, makes now that, and now that you mention it right now, they're actually, they, they need 
they're they're on a they're going on a specific mission to South America this week mm. to save 15 kids, and they wow. need at last count they need about seven thousand dollars. I donated for that today. Anybody who wants to donate to save 15 kids this week, Jeez. go to childrescueassociation.org, and you'll you'll see that right on the homepage. A way for you to donate to that specific mission. How great is well, that? Well, this this makes it as a dad or a mom, you want to grab a weapon and go with them because mm-hmm. it's like it just makes you so in the indignity is so great. I, I get so angry at this, but I I like this this charity as well because there's like not immediate gratification, but there's some definite satisfaction you get soon when. Um, you you find out that they did get them. Well, you're, you're you're tucking your kids in at night, and what if these were your kids? I yeah. mean, you have to put yourself in that position. Absolutely. Emotionally, boy, I'm I'm just glad. I'm glad you're doing something, and I and this is a way for us to get involved. So it'll bring a lot of awareness to this as well. So good on you, Steve. Yeah. So just yeah, anybody who wants to be involved, call me four three five eight six two nine three seven zero. We need a big team. We're meeting on March seventh. Okay. And that's Excellent. at 8.30 a.m.? Yes. To 12.30. So 8.30 and, a.m. And even to 12... if you can't make that first meeting, still call me. There's going to be plenty for you to do, even if you don't make that first session. Just, yeah. just If you want to have any inclination to be involved in any capacity whatsoever, it might be as simple as sending out emails to your friends or posting a link on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Call me anyway. We'll find a way to, to get you involved. Using your talents, anybody's talents to help. So right. I think that's great. And you're also, you also have this ginormous, I love that word, project going on right now with the Statue of Responsibility. Do you want to tell people about this? Because maybe some people haven't heard of it. Yeah, yeah, that was this exciting. Is huge. You know, it's, been, it's been in the works since about 1997, but it's been kind of underground. I mean, a lot of people know about it, but not, I mean, it hasn't really gone mass yet because there's been so many, they've just been building foundations, but where things are really, really heating up. There's some really big things in the work, really exciting. So where it, um, you know, for anybody who hasn't heard of it, where it came from was Victor Frankl, in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, which I consider to be among the top five most important books ever written in the history of the world. Mm-hmm. Now, here was a, 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 a Jewish psychiatrist who survived Nazi concentration camps, and he's the guy that we all know is, is in the concentration camp saying the last of the human freedoms is to choose one's own attitude in any given set of circumstances. It's that guy, right? And in, in his book, which I read his book when I was about 15 years old, and this quote always stuck with me through the years, he said, freedom threatens to degenerate into arbitrariness unless it is balanced by responsibleness. And by the way, Thomas, that's why I'm not a libertarian. So <laughs> moving on, <laughs> I want to open up that kind of word. So freedom, freedom threatens to degenerate into arbitrariness unless it is balanced by responsibleness. And then he continues, and he said, therefore, the Statue of Liberty on the East Coast should be supplemented or balanced with a Statue of Responsibility on the West Coast. So he just gave it as a suggestion in his book. Well, in 1997, uh, Stephen Covey and and actually Victor Frankel himself and a few a handful of other people got together and said, "Well, could we do this? Let's let's do this." So they they created the Statue of Responsibility Foundation. They put some things in place. Uh, they they hired um, uh, they commissioned Gary Lee Price, mm-hmm. who's a world renowned sculptor. To, to put together a, a model, you know, a statue. And and then they, and, and I, I apologize, that was actually about 1992 mm-hmm. when, they, when they first started talking about that. In 1997, Gary Lee Price had a, uh, he, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I'm, I think I'm forgetting my dates anyway. I don't know about the timeline, but um, Gary puts together a, a statue or, you know, a, a, a prototype. Mm-hmm. They fly, uh, let's see, yeah, okay, here, here, they, they create a foundation in 97, and then in 2004, they take Gary's prototype, they fly, Victor Frankl uh, passed away mm-hmm. in 97, and, and then in 2004, they have a prototype, they fly over to Vienna to meet with Victor Frankl's widow, Ellie, and Gary showed her his prototype, which depicts a hand reaching up to the heavens, Mm-hmm. And then a hand reaching down, grasping that hand. Wow. 
Wow. And Ellie just, she couldn't contain her emotion. She, she got, she just got really emotional and she, she takes Gary into her study and she, where, where, where Victor had, you know, it's where he had written, it's where he had spent his life. She takes him into Victor's old study and nestled among all of his thousands of books, there's this tiny wooden statue. It's about a, you know, it's small, it's about a foot tall. And he said it was one of his most cherished possessions, and it's entitled The Suffering Man. And it depicts a man in agony reaching up to the heavens for help. And she turned to Gary and she said, Victor always used to ask, where is the hand reaching down, you know, to help the suffering man? And she said, here you bring me a statue that answers my husband's question. Oh, that just gave me chills. (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, it did. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so that's, that's the, you know, that's the idea of it. And that's, that was the foundation of it. And so they've just been in the, in the process of putting this all together. I mean, I don't know if you guys know, the Statue of Liberty took 20 years to put up Mm -hmm. and it's the same process here. I mean, it is, you know, no pun intended. It's a monumental task. (laughs) It's going to be 300 feet tall, right? It's going to be as tall as the Statue of Liberty. Somewhere on the West Coast, they're not exactly sure yet, but it'll be on the West Coast. They, they have some specific locations they're looking at, but nothing's finalized yet. And, and, and it's happening, and it's happening in a big way, and, and people are going to start hearing a lot more about it because we've, we're finally to a place where we can really take it to the masses. Well, I don't think people understand, Steve, that there's a plaque at the Statue of Liberty where there's a poem, but you were given the huge opportunity to write the plaque for this new statue. Um, what is the title of And of would that? you read it on the air? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, we're, we just designed this as a, as a really, really beautiful uh, poster that's going to be up for sale on. By the way, anybody who wants to learn more about this can go to statueofresponsibility.com. So last year, the foundation approached me and asked me to write. Basic, so, so at the base of the Statue of Liberty, there sits a poem entitled The New Colossus by Emma Lazarus. You, everybody knows it. Bring me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, your ain't free free. I mean, one of my, it's just a breathtaking poem I totally love. So they, they, they approached me last year and commissioned me to write something similar, kind of an idea that would, like a manifesto, if you will, that would express, here's what this is about, here's why it's important. It's something that would be kind of at the base of it in, in the same thing. So I, I, you know, very, very huge honor. Just I was so Absolutely. humbled and thrilled to be a part of that because Victor Frankl is, I mean, he's just been one of my heroes through my entire life. So it was, it was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun, and it's been fun to be a part of it. Well, we'd sure love for so, you to read it. Sure. Okay. So it's entitled United in Freedom. To this land of liberty flocks the tired, poor, huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Today I breathe free and live abundantly because of their blood, sweat, and tears. My brothers, my sisters who have gone before, never will I forget the monumental price you paid for my freedom. As I joyfully exercise my rights, I will humbly remember my responsibility to mankind. My brothers, my sisters with whom I share this consecrated land, as the hands of our ancestors reach down through the ages to uphold you and me, so too do I extend my hand to you. As great sacrifice was required by our forebears, loving service is required of me. My brothers, my sisters yet unborn, ever will I remember that my choices today bear consequences for you tomorrow. May my hand reaching across generations be not oppressive, but uplifting. For the lamp of liberty is fueled by responsibility, and our destiny is individual, not, is, and our destiny is not individual, but communal. As that is our legacy of the past, so shall it be our hope in the future. Wow. Wow. I, I don't even know what to say. Amazing words. Completely amazing. Absolutely. You did, you did a fantastic job on this, <laughs> really and truly. That's I can what, see this under the statue. This is going to be amazing. Well, that's one reason I hang out with them, because they learn a few <laughs> things. But I do want to say... friends wisely, huh? I love, absolutely, make sure they're wiser than you are. Mm. But I like how the Statue of Liberty and Responsibility would be the bookends for the land of the free 
And it, it just shows that both sides of the coin, yes, you want freedom and liberty, but you have to have personal responsibility. And that's how I justify being a libertarian. I'm religious. So that kind of mm-hmm. offsets that Absolutely. arbitrariness. And, that I, I have, and I'll, I'll venture to guess <laughs> that, Stephen, you really prayed about what to say. Oh, absolutely. I was just in a reverie. I mean, it, it was, uh, it, it was fun. It, it was, it's just, it, I mean, it's very humbling. It's oh, humbling I can to be, imagine. To play some small role. I mean, there's so many other people that are, I mean, my, my part in this is so minuscule compared to what other people are sacrificing to, to pull this off. But, you know, it's, it's a privilege to be a part of something that is just so core to who I am and what I stand for and, and the legacy that I want to leave for my children. I truly believe that. There was a, a segment at the very beginning of the show, and it talks about a committed life and leaving behind a committed life where you, where you, riches aren't really the thing to leave behind. It's a committed life and whatever that commitment is. And I just think it's remarkable. All the books that you have, if you want to learn more about Stephen Palmer, uh, go to stephenpalmer.com, correct? It's Stephen D. Stephen D. Palmer.com. And it's and it's Stephen with a PH. With a PH. Stephen. Stephen D. Palmer dot com. Am I right? That's right. <laughs> so, oui. That's right. Yeah. And I, I think it's amazing what you're involved in. What a great project. And you should definitely go to statueofresponsibility dot com, correct? To learn more about that? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Because I think uh, I think a lot of people are going to have a lot of interest in that, and you know it makes sense. And I, before Viktor Frankl said that, I wouldn't have thought of it, but it absolutely makes sense that it be balanced on both coasts like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Just seems like a worthy cause, uh, something that that's very very necessary to remind us that we have a responsibility because freedom isn't free, and that was the title of the last article you did. Freedom isn't free, and. We've got to teach our kids this. These are, the, these are the conversations around the dinner table that we need to be having with our kids. And what an important lesson this is. And I'm sure this was uh, on your mind for a very long time as you were writing it. And what an honor it is to be able to be the one chosen to do that. So, and, I, and I know why. If you read your books, you'll understand why Stephen was uh, chosen. So. Well, Victor said freedom is only part of the story and half of the truth. So I'm glad, you're, Steve, you're writing the other half. Well, in, in my mind, I mean, my, my political philosophy doesn't revolve around freedom. I think that we're so, we're so fixated on freedom. Everybody wants freedom, freedom, freedom. And I view freedom as like happiness, right? Mm-hmm. So any, any uh, guru will tell you, in fact, Viktor Frankl has some amazing quotes about happiness in, in Man's Search for Meaning. He talks about how happiness... You don't pursue happiness. Happiness must ensue as a byproduct. It, it's a byproduct of going out to serve other people, hmm. right? And right? So happiness, he says, it's not a direct goal that you pursue. It's something that just happens as you lose yourself in a cause, in a meaning, in service. And I view freedom as the same way. I don't view freedom as an abstract ideal. I don't view it as the foundation. I don't view it as this is the thing we're going for. In my mind, freedom is, is like happiness. It's nothing but a byproduct of responsibility. Hmm. The responsibility should be the base, the core, the foundation of our political philosophy. When responsibility informs our political philosophy, it completely changes the conversation. I, I can't disagree. I really can't. I used to think of the Ten Commandments that way, that they were more of a responsibility uh, uh, to live by them, to, to try to live by them, and that that created a responsibility because it actually, if you had those 10 rules, it would instill more freedoms than you can imagine, correct? So I, I, I love the fact that, uh, that you're talking about happiness and that you're talking about um, making sure that we all have the ability to be happy in our lives and uh, really have the freedom to do so, Right. Well, if we well, if, let, let me just let me make it more concrete for you, right? Like, mm-hmm. so a lot of us get upset at the welfare state, for example, and we complain about the federal government. And, and by the way, I don't I don't like welfare either. But right. But instead of us complaining about the federal government instituting welfare, why don't we go out there and voluntarily try to get people off the welfare rolls? At that point, and be responsible, at that point, we wouldn't have anything to complain about because there wouldn't be any welfare rules. Hmm. So we, it, it gets really, really easy to cast stones and, and, and talk, you know, complain about force. But really, if, if we just chose more responsibility, a lot of these 
freedom-based issues that we get up in arms about mm-hmm. would really just kind of dissolve because we'd be taking care of them through more personal responsibility. I love it. Thank you. Stephen Palmer, we sure appreciate you coming on the show today. Two great topics, and I hope everybody checks it out. Again, tell everybody where they can help out with the cause of the sex trafficking. Yeah, call me directly at 435-862-9370, and you can learn more about the statute of uh, responsibility by going to statueofresponsibility.com. And you can also go to Stephen D. Palmer with a PH, stephendpalmer.com, and read some tremendous, I love his articles. I always check out your site every day. I love it because there's just a plethora of information there. So thank you so much. And listeners, come see me on March 7th at the meeting. March 7th, March 7th. Okay, thank you. Thanks for coming Thanks, on the guys. show. I appreciate you having me. Appreciate you. Thank you. What a great uh, what a great hour this has been. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Kate Daly Show on Fox News. Hi there. Welcome back to the Kate Daly Show as we're rounding up the show today on a beautiful Tuesday. Can't believe we're already at a close. Jeez, that three hours goes fast, does it, it does. not? All right. So I've got Thomas Dykes in studio with me. Well. The thing occurred to me, and we didn't plan this, but we had a theme today, Kate. And I honestly believe this is probably one of the most important shows we've ever done together. And the the theme was our kids. The first, we talked about public education, saving them from authoritarian authoritarian control and collectivism. Then we talked about child sex trafficking, saving them from abuse and from slavery. The last was statue of responsibility. We talked about personal responsibility, saving them from dependency. Wow. <laughs> I just was like, this I was all even, about the kids. I did not even draw that conclusion. You're right. Raising them to be free men, You're free women, right. to be true Americans, real Americans. I couldn't have said it better myself. This is why well, I have thanks. Thomas Dykes on with me every Tuesday. <laughs> It's been a pleasure. <laughs> oh, this is great. Thank you so much. A big shout out to uh, Stephen Palmer, too, and Heather yes. Gardner for coming on the show as well. Matt Justice at the beginning of the show. They were Just, awesome. Seriously, a lot of fun. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your views and, and your uh, excitement and also your courage for stepping up and, and taking some action. Step Thank up. You. Step up. Thank you. Thanks, Thomas. Appreciate you. And uh, we'll see you back here next Tuesday. That's, oh, absolutely. yeah. All right. We'll be back. And also check out the new video on Facebook. You can see us in studio doing our thing. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you here tomorrow for Dallas. Dallas.